what is a derivative and how does this definition of derivative actually work? In this video, I will explain it for you as clearly as possible. The derivative is in fact the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a specific point. You can think of it as the slope of the graph of the function at that given point. The slope is the derivative. If we have a coordinate system like this and then draw some graph to a function, we can call the function f of x and then have the question, what is the derivative of f when x equals a? It is more common to write it like this. What is f prime of a? That little thing over the f is called prime and it stands for that it is a derivative. Then we know we place some point at the graph with the x value a and I place it here then the derivative is the slope of the graph at this point. But more exactly, the slope of a tangent line to the graph in this point. A tangent line is a straight line that just touches this point and have exactly the same slope as the graph in that point. To really understand why the definition is looking exactly like this, I need to show you something a little bit more interactive. We have a coordinate system with a graph and then a point on the graph. We can call the point big A. The x value of big A is little a, like the example before. Then I know that the slope of the tangent line is the derivative, like this. But I can't measure the slope if I only have one point. I know how to measure a slope for a straight line between two points but not for only one point. So the key thing is to put in an extra point on the graph. And then we draw a line between both of these two points. And this line is not called a tangent, it's called a second. And the slope of the second is not the same as the slope of the tangent. But if we call the distance between these two points for little h and then change the value of the h closer and closer and closer to zero, then the point b is starting to move. I take h and I change this value and then we see that point b is moving towards point a. And the slope of the second is also changing. When h approaches zero, then the slope of the second is closing in on the slope of the tangent line. And when h is almost zero, like 0 0.48 that we have now, then the second and the tangent line are almost identical. If h are closer yet to zero, like 0 0.01, then it's almost identical. If we only look at the tangent, and then only look at the second, so we can't really see any difference. If we zoom in, then maybe we can see that this is not exactly the same line. If we only look at the second and then change the value of h to exactly zero, then the second will go away because these two points are no longer two points, it's the same point. Here's why the limit comes in. The limit for something is what value would it be if it could have go to a value that it can't be. So h, if it could go to zero like this, what value would the slope have been then? So we can see that the slope would have been exactly the same as the slope of the tangent if h could be zero, but it can't be zero but you can cal calculate it with mass anyway. And I show you in a little, little bit of time. But first, why is the numerator looking like this? And why is the denominator looking like this? Let's put in some variables. We have already x value of point A is A. And then of point B, we have A plus the distance H. So A plus H. The y value of a is f of a. So we put in a in the function and then we calculate the y value. The y value of point b 
Then we put in a plus h as the x value, put it in the function. So the y value would be f of a plus h. And then we have the numerator on the formula. This numerator is the difference between these two y values. So this is this distance, f of a plus h minus f of a. It's the same as delta y. And we already know that the value of delta x is the value of h. So delta x equals h, because if we take a plus h and then subtract a, then we get only h. So the numerator in the definition is delta y and the denominator is delta x. And when we divide delta y with delta x, we got, get the slope of the line. And the limit, it is what value would the slope have been if the distance could have been exactly zero. And now we will calculate this on a real example. Here we have a real question. Let f of x equals x squared minus 3. Determine f prime of x and determine f prime of 2. In the first question, we need to find the function expression for the derivative, meaning an expression where we can insert any value of x and then calculate the derivative. In the second task, we need to determine the derivative when x has the value 2, meaning the slope of the graph at that point. The first thing that I always do inside my head is in the definition that I replace all instances of a with x instead, because I think that it is more easy to write the definition like this. Then I know the solution. Okay, first I write down the function f of x equals x squared minus 3. I know that x squared, this expression, is inside the definition here. So in a moment, I will put this bit inside the definition, but not right away. First, I will look at this expression here, f of x plus h. And I know that the thing inside the parenthesis is the value of x. So the function is here, but now I shall replace the x here and put x plus h instead. So instead of x, I replace it with x plus h and then I write it inside a parenthesis. So a parenthesis like this, we square it and then minus 3. I must remember how to square a binomial like this and I use this rule of course. I shall take the first term inside the parenthesis and square it. So I got x squared, then I take the double of the product of my terms, so 2hx or 2xh, and then plus h squared, and of course minus 3 at the end. And then now it's time to put everything inside the formula. So I start writing the formula f prime of x equals limit h approaches 0, and then I will replace f of x plus h with my expression right here. Then I take the minus sign, and then I replace f of x with my expression right here. And this I must do inside a parenthesis like this, because the negative sign over here in the definition is working on the whole f of x. So the parenthesis is important. I know that if I have a negative sign before a parenthesis, then the sign inside the parenthesis are changing. So this sign here will become a plus sign when we take away the parenthesis. And of course, you can write it like this at once if you know what you are doing. So we have a plus inside here. And then, of course, divide everything by h. The key point is to replace h with the value 0 when we can. We can't do it right away because we can't have a denominator that is equal to zero because you can never divide anything by zero. But with a little hocus pocus, we can get rid of this denominator here. I show you. First, we cancel out some terms. We cancel out x squared and 
negative x squared, we cancel out minus 3 and then plus 3. And then now we can factor out h because the two terms that we have left both are containing the variable h. So we factor it out and write it before a parenthesis like this. From the first term we have left 2h and from the left term we have left an h. So we can write it like this h times 2x equals this term, and h times h equals h squared, and divide everything by h. And now we have a multiplication sign here, and then we can cancel h with h. And then now it's okay to put in the value 0 instead of h, because h is not longer in the denominator. So it's okay to do it right, right now. Then I can skip the limit sign. I can write it that this equals exactly 2x plus 0. So the limit is exactly 2x. The answer to the first question is that f prime of x equals 2x. And this means that in the function we have from the start, in any point of that graph, you can calculate the slope if you replace x with the value of that point in this expression here. So question B, determine f prime of 2. The only thing that we have to do is to replace this x here with the number 2. So it will be 2 times 2, and then it will be, of course, exactly 4. So the question B is that f prime of 2 equals 4. The slope when x equals 2 is 4. The rate of change when x equals 2 is 4 for that function. Here we have a much harder question. Let f of x equals 2 divided by x. And my steps are the same at the beginning. First I write down the function like this, and then I write down f of x plus h. I replace x with the new x value, x plus h, like this. So 2 divided by x plus h. I put everything inside the definition up here. So I write it down like this. f prime of x equals the limit when h approaches 0. And then I replace f of x plus h with my expression here. So 2 divided by x plus h. And then minus 2 divided by x. And divide everything by h. Now I know that these two terms have different denominators and they need to have the same denominator. So the least common denominator is x multiplied with x plus h. I have to multiply them with uh, each other. So the first fraction, we expand it by multiplying with x up and down, and the next one with x plus h up and down. And now they have a common denominator. It's the same for both fractions. I can write them a little bit easier first. 2x divided by, and then I multiply in x inside the parentheses, so x squared plus hx, and then minus 2x plus 2h divided by x squared plus hx, and everything divided by h. And then now I can write this a little bit simpler. So I have the denominator x squared plus hx in both fractions. So I can write it like 2x and then divide by the whole denominator like this, and then minus in the numerator. And then this negative sign here is working on both 2x and 2h, because when we have had the fraction like this, it was a subtraction with the whole fraction. But now we don't have an own fraction, but so we have to think of it. So we have to think of it as an invisible parenthesis like this. So the negative sign is working on 2x. So we have minus 2x, and then the negative sign is working on 2h also. So we have minus 2h. We have to divide everything by h as well, but instead of doing it, I will. Re replace h with h divided by 1, 
because I know that I can inverse the fraction in the denominator and replace the operation here with multiplication instead. So I inverse this one and replace it, this one with multiplication. So I multiply this one with 1 divided by h. The next row, we have the limit of course, then we can cancel out 2x and minus 2x. So we only have minus 2h in the numerator and in the denominator we have x squared plus hx and then we will multiply it with h. So I write it with a parenthesis and then multiply with h. And now I know that I have a multiplication sign in top between minus 2 and h and then a multiplication sign in the denominator also. So I can cancel out h and h. And now I can replace h with the value of 0. So I put 0 instead of h and then the expression for the derivative will be of course minus 2 divided by x squared plus 0 times x and 0 times x you don't have to write it. So we have the answer f prime of x equals minus 2 divided by x squared. And in the next question we will replace x with the value of 2 and calculate the slope or the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change when x equals 2. So we can do it like this. And then it will be equal, after a little hocus pocus, to negative one half. And there we have it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, write a comment. See you in the next one.